Hi everybody, welcome back to Dan's Tri-5 Garage. An actual real video for a change instead of a couple live streams. I've been kind of busy this summer and Jenny, my wife here, told me that I should probably get out here and make a video for you guys because it's been a while since I actually did a video and kind of just catch up on what we've been doing lately. So kids are back in school now, so hopefully I'll have a little bit more time. We've been pretty busy on the weekends. So I'm trying to think of all the stuff we've done. We went down to Kentucky for the Tri-5 Nationals and hung out down there for a few days. And last weekend we took the kids to the Dells for the for a long weekend for Labor Day weekend uh, since uh, it was their last weekend before school started again. So I've been kind of busy. Uh, Logan was in the hospital, my middle one, uh, the beginning of the summer. We thought he was going to have heart surgery, but he didn't end up needing that. So uh, that was a good thing. It's still coming, but uh, kind of freed up the summer to do some other things. So, yeah, I just figured I'd uh, give you guys a little tour of what's been going on around here. I've been more, more or less buying stuff and picking up parts than anything. Uh, and I'll show you something else I just picked up. So I've gotten a little bit of work done, but I figured today I'm going to get out and get some actual work done. So here I'll show you what's been going on. All right, so if you've been watching any of the live streams I've been doing, um, you'll you'll know that I brought a couple cars home this year. Sorry, there's gnats are out. It's that time of year around here. Um, so first off, you know, this, some of this might be, you know, uh, old news for you guys, but so I picked up a couple 57s. So you, you, if you saw my live stream out in Wa when I was out in Washington visiting my uncle, I, I picked this up. This is that 57 delivery that my uncle had out there that I bought from him uh, to have, like I say, it was in good enough shape to drive. I was just going to finish putting it together. He's got all the trim and everything. You know, the dash has all been done and everything. The interior had to be finished. But you can see the paint can down there on the floor. I was just going to scuff it, shoot it, and paint it and drive it this summer. Well, uh, on the way back here, one of his buddies was hauling it for me and he got ran off the road and tore up the quarter panels. So now I have to Put a new quarter panel on that side. I think I can probably fix the other side. But like I say, this thing is, it's got a small block in it and a turbo 350. Let me get the hood open here. Come on. There we go. There we go. I don't know what was going on there, but yeah, it's running driving car and then when it bounced around, it uh, put a hole in the oil pan. You can see all the oil leaking under it there. So I gotta fix that yet, but I'll get that done here pretty soon. And also I picked up a little parts car, a 57 four-door sedan, Bel Air, that was supposed to be an original car. Well, it is an original car, but it was supposed to have an original 283 in it, but it turns out it's a 58 283. Um, but it was supposed to be running not long ago and I'm thinking if this engine runs I might actually pull this engine out and put my dual quad setup on it for now wouldn't be original but then again I want that for the convertible or so I think so far but this is a 57 pick that up I pulled a few parts off it uh, traded a couple things to a couple guys that needs some stuff I actually traded a quite a few parts off that um, and some other parts I had for a Muncie four-speed and a complete uh, clutch setup and everything all brand new. So I kind of got an idea what I might use that for. I'll show you guys that here in a minute. Or I should say what I'm going to use it for. So there's the... So I got two Muncie sitting here on the bench now. And then, like I say, don't mind the filthy garage. Ended up with a Lakewood scatter shield and stuff like that. A couple of brand new clutches. Uh, but like I said, I've been doing more buying and horse trading this summer than anything. Yeah, Wisconsin weather, it goes from a couple of nice days in the spring to about uh, 100 degrees overnight, it seems like. Because the past month or so, maybe a month and a half, that's all it's been is hot and steamy and humid. So I try to get out of here and get a few, few, few things done. Um, but it really wasn't good weather for sandblasting or painting or any or primering or anything like that, trapping moisture and everything. So 
Plus, like I said, we've been gone a lot on the weekends. And also, I've been helping Bill, neighbor Bill. I think you guys remember him from last year. He's got that 55 wagon. We've got that thing almost buttoned up. Um, we've been doing the interior on it. And really, the only thing left to do is I have to um, fix his wiper cables. Because whoever put them in, they got two of the cables crossed. So instead of, you know, the wipers doing this, they both go the same way. So, but the problem with there is also is whoever painted the car painted it with the wiper transmissions and it got paint all over in the threads of the wiper transmission so now I can't get the nuts off in order to get the uh, cables loose enough for me to take them off so I'm gonna have to try to do that here probably this week because he's got a car show he wants to go with car go with to with the car this weekend um, so here I'll show you the one other thing that I picked up and I I don't even know what to say I just keep dragging them home so here was a auction here not long ago it was a vanderbrink auction and every time one of those come around i'm sure you guys have heard of yvette vanderbrink's auctions she does a lot of the uh uh cool old old car auctions you know guys that had a whole horde of cars and stuff stashed away well these ones happen to be right near me and i was kind of lucky this time because it was actually close by it was literally like 10 minutes from where i live um, there was probably 25, 30 cars maybe, and a whole bunch of storage units. Uh, the guy had um, rented like 40 storage units for years, and then ended up not being able to pay for them, so they all got went to auction. Well, this happened to be in it. So, 57 150. Like I say, I've always wanted one of these. I've always loved the looks of a 150. So, for those of you that don't know, you might think it kind of looks like 55 Chevy trim. Well, this particular car it actually is but on a 57 150 uh they didn't have the the big you know the the big fins like this uh they're off i took them off now but they didn't have the big aluminum inserts or even the side trim like a 210 has because a 210 would have the trim top and bottom but painted so a 57 150 basically used a 55 chevy configuration now whoever had this car before me these are actually 55 chevy 210 quarter spears now 57 had their own quarter spear it has a like a, a a line down the center of it so but i do have those also but so this car uh evidently was originally a race car um you can see they've got the radius wheel wells and the front of this frame was actually subframed already with like a late 70s Nova, I think probably it's, it's a front steer, front subframe. Now when I got this car, it didn't have these fenders on it. I just kind of hung them on here to get them out of the way. Um, but it does have a original, not an original, but a, a 30 over 350 and a turbo 350 in it. Now I'm pretty sure this car sat inside for a long time because um, it does have a little bit of, of uh, surface rust in the bores of the cylinders but i'm thinking i'm gonna pull the engine apart and send the block down to the machine shop and see if they can get the rust out of the cylinders if if it's if it's doable i'll probably just put this motor back together for something but uh what my plans are i think and what i'm thinking of and i'll show you a couple things i've bought kind of since then is when we went down to the tri-5 nationals um I got to watch on the bracket racing and I think it's time for me to put together a race car. So I know what you guys are thinking, another project, but this car, I think what I would do is I would probably swap out the frame. I've got another 57 frame sitting over next to the garage. Um, this car originally had a tilt front end on it. it di I didn't get that with the car, uh, but you can see they got door hinges here, like, like house hinges for like closet doors and stuff welded to it. So. I'm assuming this had a tilt front end on it at one point in time. And in the back, I got it unbolted now. But if you guys have, are friends with me on Facebook or anything, you'll have the beer, beer keg gas tank was mounted in the trunk. So I got that listed for sale right now because I'm not going to go quite that race car on this thing. But this thing's super solid. So inside, these are in it. I've had, I don't know how many guys asked me about those brand new thrush mufflers. I think 
this kind of thing was kind of like a time capsule. Uh, the trunk was locked shut, and you can see somebody, whoever had this before, I don't know what the deal was with the engine, but the, the heads were laying in the back seat and all the head bolts and everything. Um, and this thing was just chock full of stuff. There's a couple old mufflers there. But a couple of 60s square back buckets, and this is, I think, like a Pontiac Catalina backseat or something like that. There's the heads. But at one point in time, I'm pretty sure this thing went down the racetrack. And it does need a, a full floor in it because it's it's usable, but it's been patched up. Uh, probably, like I say, what I would do if I'm going to pull this off the body, or the, for the frame off the body, the body off the frame. I'd probably just put together that other 57 chassis I got over there and set it on it. And while I had it out, I'd probably just put a one-piece floor in it. But usually they're rotted all up above the wheel wells, and this one's actually pretty clean. Now, one thing they did do was chop up the dash a little bit because they had a, I'm assuming, I think it's like a Firebird front cluster or something in it. So, yeah, I think that's a cluster out of like a Firebird. So they, they hacked up the dash a little bit to get it in there and bolted the shifter to the floor and stuff like that. But... I, I have everything for this car that I could put this thing back to stock configuration in, in pretty fast time. So I'm not going to go as far as taking the glass and stuff like that out of it because it's it's all there. So yeah, really what I think what I'm going to do with this thing is uh, redo the chassis, put an engine and trans in it, and uh, drive it. Put it, on the, put it on the track, maybe take it out to the Nationals next year and have some fun. So, what I'm thinking I might do is I have that 348 in the garage, and now I have all this uh, um, a couple Muncies and that Lakewood bell housing and stuff like that. I think I'm going to put that stuff in this thing. I'll put the actual 57 trim back on it, the right stuff on it, and uh, basically just bolt it together and have some fun with it. So, the other thing, it was kind of weird because I bought this car, and like I say, those fenders... I actually picked those up at the Nationals, so at the end of this video, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you the difference because what's strange about that is these fenders are actually for a 57 150. There's actually three different fenders for a 57, um, and I picked them up in the Nationals because I was going to uh, drill the correct holes in them for my convertible, but now I think I will find different fenders for that convertible because out of a stroke of luck, these are the correct fenders for this car. So also, yeah, I picked this up about a month ago too. I decided it was time for a newer truck, so I finally got myself a Silverado. Um, a couple days after I brought this thing home, I bought a load of parts off a guy. And there's a 57 front seat. I'm missing the lower seat shell, so I gotta find those. There's a couple more bell housings up there, so I could do that. Um, this uh, 57 tie bar came with it, but came with a uh, uh 57 567 aftermarket booster and master cylinder basically a guy bought a car that was drivable and uh took a bunch of the stuff off and redid it which will all fit this car so i can't beat that so i bought that load of parts and then i bought this load of parts up here too i'll show you so yesterday i went and picked up this pile of stuff here so so it's an entire set of trim for a hard top so the guy the story the guy gave me was he bought a running driving restored 57 hard top and pulled the whole thing apart because he wanted it to be nicer and bought every stitch of trim brand new for the car when this stuff was already all new and well, not new but used straightened and polished so i went and picked this stuff up so i think i'm going to use some of the bits and pieces off of this on my hard top in there because i really really need to get back on that because that thing's so close that i could be driving that before too long really um, but yeah, so now I got a bunch of extra trim here, got a couple headlight bezels, and a two-piece radio. So here's something I learned. So I always, I knew there was a, a manual tune radio. I have that, that's a transistorized, but I always thought the 57 radios, the only one that came with a power supply was a Wonder Bar, a separate one, or a separate power supply, like a 55 56 is, but this one does have a separate power supply, so... I'm going to hook that all up and see if that actually works. He threw that in with everything, but uh, I picked up a set of rally wheels. I think I'm going to throw these on that, that 57 grill bar, but like I say, just a whole bunch of parts that I've gotten uh, lately that coincidentally fit that car. So 
I think that's going to be the plan. So what else have I picked up? This, I picked this up a couple about a month ago, 55 Del Rey seat. Um, set of American Racing. Or actually, they're not American Racing. They're Wheel Vintiques. Uh, 16 and 17 inch rally wheels. There's that booster and the swing pedals and stuff that were they got the wrong ones in that 57 so I'm just gonna start bolting stuff together on that thing <clears throat> but yeah I think that's about it that I've been uh, I've purchased lately but like I say if you guys ever need parts let me know because that's that's what I do I buy tons of this stuff and then it, I use what I need and try to help out and get every everything else to everybody else that they need so I'm thinking about starting my own parts business actually. So and I've had a lot of guys ask me why I don't and it kind of makes sense. So we're gonna look into that a little bit too. But uh, yeah, so if you guys need anything, give me a holler. So now I think I'm gonna get back to work on that floor back there. Um, all I really have to do is fix a couple spots on the floors where the bolts broke out of my the one support. Um, I weld those in and then the floor is all done. No more welding, the car is welding wise is done um it's been a long time coming because like i could tell you uh, i like fixing floors and fixing what's there so i keep it as original as possible but i think this is probably the last floor i'm gonna fix so it's just that it, it takes too long when to fix all the little spots when really if you buy a full one piece floor pan which i also have back there i did get one of those for the heart or the convertible I mean, you could pretty much have one of those changed in a weekend. So let's go back there and we'll see if we can't get them uh, those bolts out and get it welded up and we'll be done. All right, so I'm finally getting these floors buttoned up. I got all the major welding done. Uh, the pans are all in, the inner rockers are all done. Um, you can see I kind of, I started sandblasting this thing last summer and it started to flash rust a little bit. So I'm gonna have to clean all that up before I can actually get to primer in the floors. But there's one last thing I gotta get take care of here, and it's gonna be this. So you'll see here, and you guys are gonna run into this probably a lot on these things, is I've got two uh, body bolts that broke off in the floor sports. So what I've normally tried to do in the past is, if you can get in here with a welder, um, a lot of times I'll weld a nut onto the end of it. And I've done that I don't know how many times and it just keeps breaking off. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take, and I'm gonna use my cutoff wheel and I'm gonna cut this section out, get to the back side of it and see if I can get the nut or the bolt out of the nut from the back side. If not, what I'll do is I'll grind the nut off and just weld the new nut on and weld this all in place. So let's get to work. We'll cut that open and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, there we have the piece cut out. You can see there's the broken bolt stuck it through the nut. So now I'm gonna clamp this thing in the vise and I'm gonna weld the nut to the back side of that bolt and see if I can back it out that way. Give it a shot. All right, and there you can see there's the nut that I welded on top of the, what was left of the bolt and backed it right out. So now I'll weld this plate back in. There's actually the outer piece of the, the brace actually is not welded to that. So I'll have to weld this in, then I'll have to weld the other piece on top of it. And then after that, I'll chase the threads and everything with a, with some uh, with a thread chaser to make sure everything's all cleaned up. Um, now I know a lot of guys will say, you know, you could have drilled it out or whatnot, but I have found a lot of times when those are so far in there like that, um, I don't have real good luck with that. I'll break off uh, easy outs and stuff like that. So to me, this is just the easiest way to do it. Then you know you'll get it out. All right, so I uh, got the nut out, or I should say the bolt out of the nut, and I got this welded all back in place. Now all I have to do is dress the welds, Grind it down and it'll be just like new. So I did go ahead and open up the other uh, spot where the bolt was froze up or broke off in there. And I did weld the nut to it. This one, however, did not want to play nice. So I'll show you what happened on this one. And this one might be partially my fault uh, because when I tried welding the nut on to back the bolt out the bottom, I think I got a little barrier or something to where it was almost, the bolt was almost welded into the nut. So it came out, but it took the threads with it. So now what we're gonna do, just like I said before, we're gonna grind that nut off and we're gonna weld the new nut in place and then we'll weld it all back together. So let's get that done and we'll weld it up. 
Okay, we got our new nut welded into place in there. And all we gotta do is get that welded back up into there and we will be in good shape. All right, we got them all welded in. So you can see there's the first one, all welded in. The uh, welds are all dressed and flush night or ground down nice. So here's the other one I just got welded in. So I'm gonna wait for that to cool down so I can take that bolt out. I just kept that in there to make sure that the bolt would run in and out of the nut. So I'll get those welded or grinds welds grinded down. I can't talk today apparently. <laughs> so with that, the welding on this car, other than right here, I gotta do a couple little little patch right there on the rocker. But the welding and fabrication is finally done on this. So everything on the bottom side of the car is all welded up. So no more holes anywhere. All the patches are welded in. Like I say, now all I have to do is get out here and I'm gonna probably work on that this week a little bit. Um, I'm gonna uh, sandblast the bottom of this. You can see where it started to flash rust on a lot of spots, right? Like especially like right there. But uh, I'm gonna get this all uh, sanded back down. I'm gonna get it put in epoxy primer. And then I haven't decided yet, either I'll just put it basic black, um, maybe undercoat it, or I might go down and get some red oxide paint so it looks like the original red oxide primer and put on it. I always like the looks of that. Not that ever, I'm ever gonna see the bottom of the car other than when I put it up on the hoist for an oil change or something, but I don't know, we'll see. Um, but then I can finally get this thing set back on the frame and that's what I've really been wanting to do lately. Uh, Cause it's been on the rotisserie for about a year now. I didn't even expect it to be that long. This is one of those projects that one thing led to another, which I was gonna put an engine and trans in it, get the thing movable under its own power. So I could get out of the way, uh, my hard top. And that's, that's my problem is once I start something, I just, I gotta take it to the next level and it's probably a bad thing, but it'll be a nice car when it's done anyway, so. Yep, so that is the last look of the bottom side of the car with uh, before you'll see it in primer probably. Um, yeah, looking good. So here's what else was in the trunk of that 57. So it gives you any indication about how long this thing's probably been sitting around. There's a brand new uh, windshield washer bottle. It's not a GM one, but it's a Trico. I mean, they were made for GM by Trico, but the GM was like the GM on them. And a whole ton of these lift kits, which I'm assuming are probably from the 70s or 80s. There's like stacks and stacks of them. And then these, I don't know why, but I got like four cases of the original Tungsol uh, 223 flashers, brand new in the boxes. So I kind of wish uh, they were the old ones, the old rectangle shaped ones, because that would be a small fortune if that was the case. But these are actually, you know, the, the uh, I can take this out of here, the, the round metal style cans. But yeah, so like I say, why there was four cases of those in here, I have no idea. But there's probably, let's see, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen lift kits for these things. Well, not they're not for tri fives; they're all for the '60s coil spring cars. But yeah, so that stuff was all hanging out in there. So that's going to be good uh, eBay or trade material, I guess. I don't know what they go for, but they don't fit anything I have. All right, now a little uh, part of it part identification. So, like I told you in the beginning of the video, I am gonna show you the difference between the three 57 fenders. Now, you can make any one of these fenders work on any car you have, but if you don't want to bother with the, the drilling holes and welding holes up, you don't need, here's a quick rundown on what the difference is. All right, so here, obviously, like I told you, this is a 150 fender. Now, 150, 57 Chevy front fenders, they only had one piece of trim on it. And that's your Chevrolet script right up here on the, on the top of the fender. You'll notice there's no holes at all here or in your louvers. Now this is a Bel Air fender. You'll notice it has the holes all the way up the side of the car for your fender spear. And also in the louver holes, it has the holes to mount your gold Bel Air louvers. Now you'll see a lot of 210s because they use the same fender spear. 
but you'll see a lot of 210s that have silver uh, bolt-in louvers in those and a lot of people think that was from the factory but it wasn't so what that was is 57 obviously bel air stuff you had gold trim like the gold chevrolet script and the v in the hood and then the grill was gold if it was a bel air now if it was a 210 or a 150 they would be silver so when the gold louvers were reproduced for bel airs they made silver ones also as a reproduction to put on your 210 so they would match now i don't have a, two, a 210 fender off but we'll go in here in the garage and i have this 57 210 back in the corner and I'll, I'll show you what i'm talking about back here hopefully it's not too dark all right so here's that 57 210 now you'll notice it still has the same fender spear going up the side that's the same piece of trim as a bel air now here's your louvers but you'll notice no holes so the difference is 150 has a chevrolet script no holes in the fender anywhere else 210 it'll have holes up the side of the fender for your fender spear that's it no other holes bel air holes up the side plus holes in all three of your louvers so that'll be the difference that's how you tell the difference between the three years like i say you can weld up the holes um, in a bel air to make it a 210 fender for the louvers you can weld up the holes for the trim on the Chevrolet script if you want to make it a 210 and drill holes all for the uh, the side fender spear, vice versa. You can you can do, do any welding and drilling you need to to make them work. But if you don't want to have to go through all that trouble, that's what you need to look for for your fenders. All right, guys, that is going to do it for me for this video. Um, sorry for the lack of videos lately. Uh, sort of the few uh, live streams. You know, I had done some work on the bottom side of the, of the floor of the window delivery, but, you know, some of that stuff gets pretty mundane, and I figured, I didn't, wasn't sure if you guys would like to see, you know, welding this patch, welding this patch, welding this patch, till we actually got to the fun stuff. So, now I think we're getting there. So, like I said earlier, um, the nice weather is hitting here in Wisconsin or the Midwest. September and October are usually really nice. It's not hot, it's not cold. You know a little breeze so it's a good time for primer and paint and stuff like that oh that was the other thing i forgot to show you up there so i do have i did order the the paint for the the window delivery there's a company called uh the coating store so if you ever go to that website they actually mix up paint specifically for tri-5 chevys all the factory colors so i mean this is just onyx black but you know any black would have worked but that's where i got the paint for my hard top which is the 50 the 56 tropical turquoise um, actually, no, that was Twilight Turquoise on that car in 56. Um, Tropical Turquoise is actually a 57 color. But, uh, yeah, so I ordered it from there, so I have that. So now as soon as I get these floors painted, I'll paint that firewall, and we're going to slam that body back on the chassis. Then we can start doing stuff like uh, running the, uh, uh, or bolting the master cylinder on, get the brakes all hooked up, running the wiring, um, then hopefully fire that thing up pretty soon. So, all right, guys, like I say, I hope to be back for more. Hopefully it won't take as long this time. We're getting to the fun stuff now, so now I'm really going to try to get out and get these videos made for you. Um, like and subscribe. Um, hit the little bell notification. That way you'll know when I make uh, new videos. And it really helps me get new content out to you guys. So thanks again. We'll see you next time. Bye.